I was going to add some water to um, to this so that it covers it goes to the top of the breast. So there it goes. And what you want to do is um, boil the water before boil the broth before it goes into the oven because you can get it up to hot temperature better on the stove than you can in the oven. But once you do that, you want it to cook slowly in the oven for a long time. So then what I do is what Thomas Keller does, and I love this. I honestly don't really know if it makes it better or not, but it works. It, you know, it's sort of a superstition for me now. Um, I haven't tested it like a, you know, Cook's Illustrated test thing, but it, what it is is I take a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to make a parchment lid for the pan instead of a regular lid. So um, I take a piece of, piece of parchment paper and I fold it into a triangle and then by folding it in half like this, triangle, and then you fold the triangle again into a smaller triangle, so it's like this, and then you, you kind of keep doing that, folding it, folding it, and folding it until it's like that. And then what you do is uh, measure measure it for the pan. So you, you, you clip the very tip of it off because you want a hole, what it'll do is make a hole in the middle. Then you sort of guess where the center is on the pan, look at the edge of the paper, and then want to make a little snip right there. And you do it at an angle so that you'll have a circle that's got these ridges. And so the idea behind this whole thing is that um, it'll cover the pan without really covering it. It'll it'll ha it'll keep all the moisture in, but it'll let a slight amount of evaporation take place, and it'll also help a little bit of caramelization on the top uh, crust layer, so that you do caramelization. Not I'm not talking sugar necessarily, but I'm, I mean I am, but I'm not talking like there's any sugar in there. But anyway caramelization to happen and that equals flavor. So once you've got this on and um, it's come to a boil, then you just put it in the oven for, let's see, three and a half to four hours. And then uh, once that's done, we'll take it from there. So I'm gonna let this come to a boil first and then put it in the oven, but um, I'm not gonna show you that because it's boring. All right, but um, what you do now is remove the veal breast from the liquid and you can put it in your pan. And you can see it's nicely brown on the top and it's got these ribs that are sticking out. And what you're gonna do is remove the ribs and remove all of the, this sort of gummy uh, cartilage and all that other stuff. Um, remove all that stuff and you're going to put it in the pan so that you basically just have the meat from the breast and discard all of the rest. Um, and that, that might take a little while, not too long, but um, for example too, like the top of this um, veal breast really cooks sort, sort of brown, so it's hard. And, and in the end what we're going to do is cut the meat into rounds with a cutter. So um, the cutter will not cut this kind of meat very easily. So so this meat you might want to shred a bit as you um, disassemble the breast. But the rest of the meat that's soft on the inside, you can just put that in in the pan without having to, to do any shredding. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once that's done, you deal with the stock. And the stock, um, as I've said, that we uh, Drain the stock. So what you're going to do is, um, I use this, which is a nice, great fat separator, and um, I've got a uh, what they call this is a um, chinois, and what I do is pour, you know, I would just separate the the broth from the um, the carrots and leeks and those things that are in there. And then um, you pour off the liquid and keep 
the pour off the liquid uh, into a, your the, into a pan, and then you get rid of the fat. So as I said before, uh, this stock is going to be reduced. Um, so I use my pan that, that I've rinsed out now from the um, from the veal breast, and then put it on the stove. And I've got my fat separator. So there's a layer of fat on the top. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a very thin layer of fat. Maybe right now it's about a quarter of an inch thin. But as this uh, settles more it'll probably be closer to maybe half an inch and um, that way what we do is we pour it from from here, um, pour it out the spout and it's taking the liquid from the bottom which is since the fat rises to the top it'll uh, only take the, the, the liquid which has no fat in it from the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. What's great about veal stock, which is what we have now um, because we've cooked the veal in the, in the liquid, What's great about veal stock is it's one of the most rich gelatinous stocks that we have, and it, it's um, because the the cartilage and the uh, bones on the veal are young, so they tend to dissolve easier in the heat and the stock. And what what we then have is um, a dissolved cartilage; it just sort of becomes a um, a gelatin in, in suspension. Okay, this is the leftover fat. I'm going to toss it. And once you have um, the gel, what's the good thing about the gelatin is, is that the gelatin gives a rich mouthfeel. It's um, it's a um, it, it, it has a velvety quality. So what we do even now from this, just the stock now is to reduce it further by boiling it and uh, simmering it until it, it reduces down. And then in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do um, separate the meat from the bones and, and the cartilage in this. Um, now, I, I wanted to also um, make a disclaimer here that this is, while I'm taking this from the French Laundry Cookbook and it is based on a Thomas Keller recipe, I'm not following the recipe to exact specifications. I, um, uh, the reason I'm not doing it is mostly because um, I want to do, I want to show um, and do a recipe from that cookbook that is not, that, that, that takes some kind of the intimidation away from um, for performing it. Because, for example, um, some of the shortcuts I'm taking are um, the chicken stock in the beginning, and then this shortcut that I've taken too um, is I've separated the meat and I've put it into my pan here. Um, but what Thomas Keller asks you to do is to uh, remove the cartilage and the bones without um, um, disturbing the positioning of the meat in the breast so that you have basically a deep boned veal breast that's just meat so that when you cut the rounds you'll still have the, the, the texture of the, of the meat grain. And what, I'm done, what I've done is basically remove the meat and left the cartilage behind. And so my rounds will taste just as good. They won't have the same texture. Um, so I've spread it out in the pan and <coughs> I've salted and peppered on the top. And then what I do is I once I've separate once I've salted and peppered it, then I want to fold it over on itself. So I'm going to take a spatula, fold it over on top of itself, so that the salt and the pepper are on the inside. Uh, now on the inside of the veal breast, and then I'm going to salt and pepper it again. 